important is getting silverware in this particular tournament because you're having a terrific season and you're doing brilliantly in the championship too. It's massive. It really is for us. It's it's huge. We've put ourselves under um, a lot of a lot of pressure, and and I think in, in football that's a, a good thing to to make sure that it it, um, it keeps you hungry to to, to win. And the fact that um, we haven't won this, this trophy for a few years now, and we're in the, the semi-finals, um, despite the fact that it's been a, a, a a busy period and a busy campaign so far. Obviously, a, a good one. We want to make it better, and I think the the one way to to make your campaign better is to to win the the trophy this year. I expect them to up their game again. They've been doing that. Um, I expect a tough game. I expect them to continue to do what they've been doing, which is you know play good football, play it from the back, try and you know develop their players and make them better and uh, that's for me what they've definitely done this season and I think our, our players know that it's going to be a, a tough game and we have to you know play to our, our best, play to our strength and we know that they've got you know areas where they can hurt us if we don't do that. You mentioned the investment there, considering all the buzz about the women's game at the moment, is this the ideal time or the, the, the priority time where clubs should be investing now? I think it's uh, it's obviously a, a good time because of uh, the, the the women's games you know been watched more than than ever. But I don't think we should you know put it all down to um, the World Cup and trying to, to to work off the back of one tournament. I think it's important that the women's game is, is seen as a, a, a long-term um, uh, game in Scotland, not a short-term game, it's a long-term and it should be invested in um, a lot more. Um, it's a, a great product, there's um, so many players in this country um, that play here that that work so hard to put football on the map, put themselves on the, on the map and I think over the, the the time that I've been involved in the, the women's game, it's it's definitely Im, Im improved. Um, but a lot of that improvement has been despite the fact that there's not been a lot of investment. And I think it's um, it's definitely time that uh, we took that seriously. Yeah. In terms of your fixtures, the Champions League is, is just around the corner as well. How difficult is it to, to balance all, all the crucial games that are coming up over a close period of time, especially with so many players that they are going to the international duty as well? Yeah, it's tough. It's just it's something that's kind of always been the case with, with Glasgow City. You know, we 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 have to juggle. It's just the way it is. Um, Champions League, um, national teams, not just the A squad, but under 19s, under 17s, players away, um, and then you know, most of them work um, as well, and uh, you're having to constantly uh, take care of them to, to allow them to be able to go and perform to the best of their ability and sometimes that means juggling them game wise, time wise, um, training wise uh, but it's, it's as I say it's something that um, is a, I, I suppose a, a, a good learning curve for a, for a coach but also for, for your players and it makes them kind of grow up um, football wise very very quickly because they they have um, a lot of things to, to juggle but you know I'm lucky because most of um, most of the players at Glasgow City are experienced and know exactly what they're doing. Champions League, I think Scotland lose out in a place as of next season. How crucial is that for Glasgow City carrying the baton next season that we get that second place back and get as many of Scotland's clubs playing in Europe as, as quickly as possible? Yeah, it's really. I think it's really important because again, it is where we're trying to to, to promote and to to grow the, the women's game in Scotland and. The more clubs that are involved in the Champions League gives it a, a greater buzz, um, and I think you know it's been it's been good to see uh, this season Hibs in the, the Champions League, you know, getting through the group sta stage, which is, is never easy, but they've they've done well to get through that. But obviously they've, they've gone out now against a very good side. But it's nice just to to have clubs in in Europe and. Um, for for us now, it's about um, focusing on making sure that we get to the the next stage, which will be tough. But yeah, it, it all helps in terms of the women's game in Scotland. I think it's quite obvious that the 
there is a there's still a, a massive difference in perception, and um, you know, from from my perspective, uh, you know, I, I know that there are areas within the the women's game and with with the development of the women's game that it needs to change in order to allow it to become what it, what it could be. Um, and it's it's uh, I think you have to ask the players because the, the players are the ones that put all the the effort in um, and then go and perform as they've been doing for the national team. Um, at European Championships, World Cups, and uh, you know it, it comes a bit of a, a joke at times. You know, the, 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 but the men can't do that. I think it should be taken seriously that the women are are, are getting to these tournaments, and um, I think they deserve all the recognition and backing they can get. And it's not happening really. Uh, that what you thought, uh, you are fine. In terms of the club schedule, yeah, and in terms of the, the equal level of put on events like this, yeah, I think it's difficult. Yeah, I think it's difficult. I think the amount of games over the course of the season, whether it's the the men's games and the women's games combined, it's always going to be hard to have equal share of publicity. And I think there can always be more. I think in terms of the the women's game, do I think that the viewing figures would be affected greatly on Sunday? The fact that it clashes with a men's Scotland game, probably not. I think the, the fans that support Glasgow City Rangers, Hibs, Motherwell will be there anyway. Um, so for us, it's not a huge, um, a huge impact. Um, but I think moving forward, that obviously, the less that these games can clash in terms of cup finals and whatever, I think that's obviously better to make it accessible and, and realistic for people to be able to attend both, um, so rather than always it being a choice. Yeah. So, so mentally, as a player, as someone who you know puts your neck on the line, everything you're going to pitch effectively. Yeah. It, it doesn't bother you. No, because I think the people that, that want to be there will be there. The people that value our game, you know, will make that choice and they'll support us. So, no, it doesn't have a. It would be great to have huge crowds every weekend. I hope one day that we we get to that place. But certainly in the meantime, the way the the game the game's growing and you know people are you know, catching on to the fact that women's football is a, a real thing that's actually worth um, watching and investing in. We will continue to bide our time and and do what we do, and if people come and watch, then great. Yeah, now you, you work in the media now. Uh, during the World Cup, the media in Scotland were all over the women's team. I mean, literally all over the team. But as soon as the World Cup ended, it stopped. It's almost back to where it was. It is back to where it was last season. How, how, can, how can the game itself generate more media for this team? That's a good question. It's difficult though, I think you see that with any sport, I don't think it's just women's football. You look at like a Commonwealth Games for example, every sport gets huge amounts of publicity, everybody's interested, you know, kids are out playing for the, the two weeks that it's on TV, um, and once the tournament finishes then everybody goes back to, to doing what they do, so resources is probably a huge part of it, um, and continuing to develop a brand that's, that's entertaining and that draws attention to it. Um, what Rangers are doing and what Hearts are doing, Motherwell, Hibs, all the clubs that are investing in the future is only going to be good for the game and you would hope that that investment um, draws increased attention and consistent levels of attention, that it doesn't just happen around major events, but generally across world sport that is what happens. At huge events you get huge amounts of publicity and then when the tournaments finish people forget the people, as we just said, put their necks in the lines day to day and they no longer want to speak to them as a sports person. That's just the reality of it a lot of the time. Um, I don't have a chip in my shoulder about where the women's game's at just now. I think that we're taking the right amount of steps, we're moving positively in the right direction. Like, there's nothing alarming about what's going on in the women's game. It's all good uh, and I think that's just what we need to keep reminding people is that it's actually worth investing your time in and coming to you know, media events games at weekends, speaking to international players that you have access to on a weekly basis. Um, so the question doesn't lie with the people in the women's game, the, the questions lie with the people that are not attending the women's game, in my opinion. Do you think there needs to be more done from the top of it? I mean, we know that there's going to be a restructuring of, of the league, but what about the, the women's game as a whole? Do you think that there needs to be a, um, a, a concerted look at this, you know, a, a bit of an overhaul? Um, to an extent, I, I think we can always keep developing with um, the players that we have. If players get better, then the infrastructure around those players ha has to keep developing with the teams. Um, 
listen, I don't know too much about what the, the future is going to hold in, in terms of changes and, and what's going on. Um, what I do know is that what goes on at Glasgow City um, is worthwhile being there and it's a joy to be there. And I hope that other clubs are creating that same environment. Um, and with that, the national team will continue to prosper. And the people that are in charge of making those decisions in Scottish football recognise that um, it's something that they need to keep pushing and making better. And with teams like Rangers making more of in, in the women's games, players getting paid for it, are you, are you concerned that Glasgow City, who are unable to, to have that, because obviously you know, people that have a men's team to play yourself, are you concerned that you might fall back or are you, do you welcome the competition? No, I've always said that for the last couple of years, I've asked, been asked the same question. The more teams that bring a challenge to us will only make us better. Um, it's like being in a team where you, you sign good players, it makes training sessions better. Um, to have that week in, week out, it makes you more determined. I wouldn't say Glasgow City are in a comfort zone because we don't dominate all three competitions right now. So um, for us, we are still trying to make ourselves better. Um, but I think for the game to improve and to have fans coming to watch and there being more competitive matches and more close encounters, I think that's got to be better. And as I speak about the investment at grassroots level, there's no point in having that investment at grassroots level if you don't have jobs at the, the end point for these players. Um, I certainly wouldn't go and study a degree that I don't have a job at the end of it. So if you're asking people to invest in sport and football and become better, you have to pay them at the end of it. So the fact that Rangers are doing that and offering these players contracts and that Celtic, um, you know, hopefully will be doing the same. Glasgow City, we know, have professional players at the club already and I think everybody um, can keep making those positive steps moving forward and certainly for me as a player that's what we need.